Hello everyone, so it's a bit of a treat um, this morning for you because me and Joe uh, aren't around for the next uh, you know, few weeks to do our daily show. We're going to put up weekly shows but um, you know, we can't dedicate as much time to the chatter uh, bus as we'd like. We're putting up today an episode of the Joe Marler podcast because Joe Marler was on last week and my God, you lot fell in love with him. We had so many positive uh, comments off the back of that. It actually made me a little bit jealous. But anyway, we're going to put uh, an episode of the Joe Marler show on the Chatterbix feed. In Joe's show, Joe Marler's show, he interviews uh, all different types of people from all different types of jobs. Submariners, car sales people, bouncers, restaurant critics. Sounds good, doesn't it? That annoys me as well. It's quite a good idea. I wish we had done that. Anyway, Joe and his co-presenter Tom interviews these people and because you fell in love with him so much last week, we thought we'd uh, we'd put an episode of his out on the Chatterbix feed. Do you say feed? Anyway, this episode is uh, he's chatting to a funeral director, I think. So that's going to be interesting, chatting to a funeral director. So please, sit back. Pour yourself a can of local Lucas Aid what? and listen to the Joe Marler Show. Our guest today is Fred and he's a funeral director. Hello, Fred. Hello, Joe. I, I realise I said hello, Fred, and looked at Tom <laughs> mainly because. Did I say funeral wrong? No, You've got a strange fine. way of saying funeral. I can't do it either. Go on, say funeral. You, funeral. Could also, you could also say undertaker, if that's easier, but that might make you think of the wrestler, but that's also what we're called, funeral director or undertaker. Okay, okay. For, so we'll go with Fred, the undertaker slash funeral director. But I'm oh, saying if you say... Funeral. I'm You're saying if funeral. you worry about saying funeral, undertaker's fine. But he didn't mention Paul Bearer in that, and Paul Bearer was his dad in yeah. wrestling. But and he always used to have a pot of ashes with him, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he did. It's quite dark, actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 What um, I'm trying to work out in my head, Paul Bearer. What would that What would that mean? If you bear something, that means to, to carry it, doesn't mm. it? You know, bearing a load or something would be. Carried. So maybe the first person that died in the world was called Paul. <laughs> or the first FSO was called Paul, and they had a team of Pauls, and they went get the Paul Bearers. So that's probably might be it. I want that to be the story. The first one to carry a coffin was called Paul, <laughs> so they called it Paul Bearer, and that's just stuck. If you are a Paul Bearer, and your first name is Paul, get in touch with us in all the usual social places. I like how we've started quite light on... Are we going to go this, dark today, Jim? Well, I, on a subject that I was kind of coming into it, I was a bit like, whoa, this one will be, it'll be tough. Because you sent me a text on the way down, and I sensed a certain amount of concern. There is concern. There's concern that whenever I think about death, or whether whenever I talk about death, it imme- I can feel it already. I can feel it in the room. Obviously, no one listening can feel it, but already it's like... Oh, fuck, the tone's changed. Mm. I'm a little bit nervous that it'll be too doom and gloom. But then doom and gloom is doom and gloom. That's why it's called fucking doom and (laughs) and gloom, isn't it? The the, the thing is with funerals is everyone thinks they're going to last forever. Everyone thinks we're going to live to 120 or scientists will make this formula which we're drinking and we'll live forever. But unfortunately, that ain't going to happen. We're all going to die. Sadly, I don't mean to bear a bad news, but there's a high chance you are going to die. What? (laughs) What, both me and Joe? Fuck. Just to clarify this, both me and Joe are going to die? Yeah. Fuck. You've brought Fred on board, and he's come in, <laughs> and he's just fucking told me and Tom we're going to die. Thanks, a fucking bundle. Okay, also, Fred, you just so you know, you are as well. Oh, no, just, so we're all in the same yeah, boat Yeah, we're all in the same boat. I, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, I agree, yeah. So, Joe, this has got me thinking. Um, hopefully you won't die for many long years, but if you are to die, and maybe I'm in some way involved with the funeral... Um, what? Oh, Why? no. Maybe you don't get to choose. Or well, do you? you clearly don't, do you? If, how can I go? How can I? Right, Fred. Here's my plan for right. the funeral, okay. and I don't want X, Y, and Z to be there. You can't. Unfortunately, you can't no, fucking do that. Unlucky. We we've we've had it before. What people don't realise is is like crematorium and churches are public spaces, so you can't stop anyone from attending a funeral. What? So we had a funeral once where um, the family didn't want this person turning up. So they had a, a bouncer on the door, Oof. right? I said to them, look, you can't do this because it's a public place. So anybody can turn up. There's no laws against it. They're like, oh, I didn't care. They're not coming in. Who was the person? Why was it such a beef? I mean, the, the issue you have with things is when people pass away, a lot of stuff about them sometimes... Mistress. Counters, 
I'm not going to comment, but yeah, it was it was something along those lines. And and they um yeah, so they turned up, and then this bouncer was like, you know, he had his little badge on, and he was like, sorry, you're not coming in. A bit like if you try to get in China White's with a pair of trainers on. <laughs> and um, I was sitting next to him, and I was like, this is only going to go one way. And they've gone absolutely ballistic. And I'm stood there going, and she's she's going, oh, you know, you you help, you help, you get me. And I was like, look, I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> and then um yeah, then then the old Bill rank turned up. Oh, and then to get her in, no, 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 because she, the bouncer touched her oh. inverted commas. Oh. She rang the old bill. They turned up, and then the family are coming out of the because obviously at a crematorium you've got an entrance and an exit. They're coming out the exit. The bouncer and the, the old bill are chatting. I'm just stood there going, right, okay, fuck, but yeah, mad, mad occasion that was, yeah. Yeah, it's not often that I'd expect a bouncer to be at a funeral going, no, nah, you're not on the list, you're not coming in. <laughs> yeah. However, Tom. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, there will be a bounce at my funeral. Maybe I'm going to come in disguise as Paul Bearer. <laughs> well played. Yeah. Well played. What have you thought about songs then, Joe, at yours? <sighs> Adele? Um, I, Adele's, she's fucking obviously going to... If she's not there singing it live, then my wife will have failed because that will be my last request that... No pressure, Dave. At my funeral. <laughs> so you try and Adele has the, to be there the singing. Of your husband, you need to book the biggest star um, in the world. To come to East Sussex. Uh, it, yeah, I think it's a tough one, Tom. Not just in terms of songs, but in terms of the questions of what we're talking about. Because I'm more than capable of taking the piss out of absolutely anything. But at the same time, I'm also more than capable of getting really emotional and upset at the smallest of things. Like, And even talk, think, trying to think of a fucking song for my own funeral. I'm like, oh God, it's making me think of all the other funerals I've been to and like... Oh no, Tom! What have you done to me? Well, so we had had this occasion once, where you have funerals either, as I said, in a church or a crematorium, and they also have these woodland halls where you can have them, and it's a woodland burial. And this is before Spotify or iTunes, well, like a pagan thing. It's not. It's not like a pagan thing. No, no. It's it's just like a like barn a, converted just like a barn. Wood. Like you go to a wedding in a uh, barn. It's like one of those. Yeah, so it's like that. And um, so we had this celebrant which is an, a non-religious minister. They're called Celebrants. So she she sorted the music out. The guy was a big Fleetwood Mac fan. Oh. So they're like, we're going to have the chain. Oh. The chain coming in. Oh. So I was like, brilliant. Bang. She was like, she was like, don't worry, Fred. Keep, keep talking. I've, sorted, I've sorted the music ding, out. Ding, ding, I said, ding, ding, no problem ding, at all. Ding, That's ding, fine. Ding, ding, so we're carrying the coffin in. And it gets to So it gets to the bit. It gets the bit in the song where... But what she downloaded wasn't the Fleetwood Mac normal version. It was the drum and bass version of that song. <laughs> and as we're carrying the coffin in, that that then goes into some sort of dubstep remix. And you go in the beat, you, and you have to go then, with the bass well, drop, and you're like, and the fucking coffin's just going up and down and, your shoulders. You're like, dun, 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 dun. And we're all stood there, and what'd you do? Because oh, there's no. a there's an eight year old bloke being carried into a chapel, <laughs> and they're playing some sort of dubstep remix of "Beat Me Back the Chain," and um, yeah, and then we went right, and so I was just like, so we went in, had the service, and to be fair to the family, they didn't kick up a fuss about it. They found the funny side of it, but the half an hour of the service was probably the longest half an hour of my <laughs> life because I was worried that. The family are going to go ballistic, and the poor celebrant, she just didn't really know what to do. And I was like, "Look, it's fine. Don't worry about it." They were fine with it, but this was this was before you know when you used to download songs off like you know the internet, and you didn't obviously know what it was. <laughs> that is like the perfect situation for me at a funeral, like something awkward or something icebreaker. Icebreaker that exactly. it just makes everyone go fucking hell. I have had a little look for the songs most requested slash played. At funerals. Oh, some research. Okay. Yes. Um, About time you pulled your finger out. I like yeah. it. Um, I see your iPad's empty. <laughs> so I'm going to give you this one. Number one. Oh, I'll tell no. you what, I'll give you artist. You have to give me the song. Go on. Jerry and the Pacemakers. I thought you were going to say Jerry Halliwell then. <laughs> Jerry Halliwell. With... Jerry and the Pacemakers. Fucking hell, that's not a good choice of artist, is it? <laughs> There's loads of people that die of heart attacks. Pace- that's very <laughs> true, yeah. yeah. You'll never walk alone. Nice. Is it? That's number one. Apparently it's number one. In the UK? In the UK. Number two, Frank Sinatra. Fly me to the, the moon. moon. Let me... <laughs> and now the, the end, end is near. near. It's and so I face 
The final curtain. My final curtain, is isn't it? it? Okay. Sorry. Right, we're, are we doing all ten? The next one, I'm going to give you the top five. Number three is, it goes down as Eric Idle. I'm going to say to you, Monty Python. Always look on the bright side of life. Number 14, a Turner. What's love got to do it, got to do it? Bush, Bush. I'm your private dancer. Bush, tell me. Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Nelson Mandela, is it? <laughs> Fucking hell. That's my gig. <laughs> it's not It's not Tina Turner's private dancer. It is Tina Turner's... Roll in. <laughs> well, I don't know any other Tina Turner. Must put sea limits, no? What the fuck? <laughs> Tina Turner's song, you wouldn't say to someone, you're the second most impressive person I, I the know. first most simply impressive the person you're simply the best <laughs> it's time to say goodbye on that list time to say goodbye Fred it is it's at number six after uh, Sheeran's supermarket flowers at five time to say goodbye Bocelli and Brightman do, do, do. It's the Step Brothers. I think I'm singing. <laughs> Fred, I needed you with me then. Sorry, Joe, I'm not, I've not got that in Fuck me, unfortunately. Sake, I don't know any Latin, so that's why I had to do the yeah. humming. I liked it. We, 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 we float between light and dark on this mm. pod. Let's float with the light. What are you having at your funeral, Tom? I did think about this on the train down, Joe. Um, can we assume for the purpose of this discussion I've led a full and happy life? Because if I drop dead on the train the way home, A, it's awkward for Steve's because um, we're in the same table seat, uh, but also it might be sad. Let's say I've lived a full and happy life. It's important that you said it might be sad. It might be sad. You might yeah. be fine with it. You might just leave me at Macclesfield. <laughs> I think, Joe, my instinctive reaction would be to try and cheer everyone up. Free from desire. Free from desire. Da da Na 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 na. Go on. Are you, Tom, are you having burial cremation? I worry that if I went for a burial, big plot. I'm thinking of the pool berries. I'm thinking of the two mates that I've got. Because you need how many do you need to carry? For for you, Joe, it'd be a six. It'd be a so six man six, carry. So if I've only got two mates, the, we've yeah. got four of my staff will put so their shoulders in them. You're, so there are people so that be, can help carry. Buy some death mates, basically. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've still got to shell out for mates, even though I'm dead. <laughs> Fuck's sake. So yeah, it'd be probably uh, six six man carry. It's got to be. I'm, I'm assuming this has to be uh, an even number. It's either four or six because of the space. Of the co- you've got to remember, a coffin's normally about six foot six foot two. So if you've got more than six, there's not enough space for people to walk. Four's the ideal number, but sometimes we go to six. They're fucking dropping me, mate. <laughs> definitely, I'm definitely spilling out of that. Have you, out, out of interest, have you ever been involved in something like that? So, no, we haven't, because... Because um, you do a top job, no, obviously. I, I yeah, think, no, yeah, it does, it, I think it has happened with regards to... But that's more, not someone falling through a coffin, but the handles of the coffin coming off, and then the coffin slipping off people's shoulders. What you've got to remember is, is obviously, the majority of the time, we carry the coffin. So we're professionals, yep. we've done it countless times, so we know how to carry a coffin. What we've got to remember is sometimes you have family members say, I want to carry a coffin. And sometimes I think, that's a really bad idea. But we can't say to people, that's a really bad idea. You've got to go, no yeah. problem at all, that's fine. But then what happens is, is they turn up on the day and the coffin's quite heavy and then they're struggling and you're like, so then one of our staff would just step in. Right. But majority of times when stuff like that happens it would be mainly because the handles come off I wouldn't see someone falling through a coffin because they're reinforced your heart you must be in your fucking throat though like, yeah, if you always. see someone struggling like oh my Legs god start shaking. oh no we've well, got to get in there quick I would say funerals for us for me as a funeral director can be quite stressful yeah. because the music might go wrong you know the, the photo montage won't work or the web stream won't work I mean when we had COVID that's why it was really difficult for us because we're in an industry where we want to give anything to the family. So the family say to us, we want doves. No problem at all. We'll get you doves. We want that to go on the back of a tractor. Tractor, sorry. We'll sort that out for you. We want a white sparkly coffin. We'll sort that out for you. No problem at all. And then this thing came along called COVID, which no one knew anything about. And then the government were like, right, well, now you can only have 10 people at a funeral. 
So we've immediately gone from an industry where we're telling people you can have whatever you want to now saying to people you can't have that. The hardest thing for me in that whole process, I arranged a funeral of a family, a lady who passed away, very popular, very well known in our village. Yeah, there were going to be 300 people on this funeral. This was two weeks before Boris gave his speech. Boris gives his speech. This lady had 10 people at her funeral. She's buried in the churchyard. They had speakers set up, ready for all these people to turn up. And she had 10 family members, a burial, all socially distanced apart. Breaks your heart. It absolutely broke my heart. And I was like, well, I didn't know what to say to the family. And they're, you know, really upset their mum's died. And basically, they've had 10 people st- and they couldn't even give each other a hug or anything. And you think, that is hard. That is really hard to say to somebody, you're going to have this really big party, but now actually you're going to have 10 people there. Um, How many are you getting, Joe? Oh, it'd be a state um, funeral. It'd be a state funeral. It'd be like Princess Diana. I'd say no more than 11. Do you want me to be one of the pool bearers? Oh, what? No, I want to be burnt. Not burnt. I want to be cremated. I can't. I'm claustrophobic, for starters. Yeah, you'd be dead, but anyway. Yeah. I know, mate. We're meant to be respecting each other's requests okay, here. Yeah. Note this down, please. Okay. If I find out, for <laughs> some reason, that it's, it's, there's an afterlife, and I find out you fucking shoved me in a coffin and I'm not been put into ashes. Yeah, let me just write this down. Ridiculous. What Ridiculous. About, where would you like to be sprinkled? Based on now and my love for the sea, I'd like to be sprinkled in the sea. But then you go, what's the fucking point in sprinkling me in the sea? Because it's only going to wash up on the fucking thing anyway and make it all frothy. You have to get permission. What, what I say to people is, if you want them scattered, say, at the beach, if you went down to the beach on, like, a morning in November and you scattered them subtly, that'd be okay. Bank but holiday had, in August. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That is the thing, though, Tom. People do that and they don't realise why they get in trouble because they're... Uh, we had someone tell us we're not allowed to do that. I said, well, obviously not because you're, you're scattering someone's remains in a public place. And someone's just slapped a what load of sun What sort of trouble are we getting in for that? Is that a fine or is yeah, it you know, like a, a fine, yeah, thing yeah. or something? Yeah, maybe a banning order from the area, possibly. Yeah, this is Frightly. the last time you can scatter ashes in this area. <laughs> <That's the laughs> yeah, possibly. I don't know. You might, you know, Asbo maybe? I'm not it sure. is, I don't know. It is a weird one. It's not a weird one. It's a, an interesting one because you always talk about these different requests. There's mm. people that have, yeah. they have ashes put in ink and the ta- a tattoo done. And, yeah, and they do jewellery as well. Jewellery, yeah. they can in, put it in diamonds fireworks. or something like that. Fireworks. fireworks. So what people, some people, it's a new thing. So you send them off to this company and they put them in the firework. He'll come down and do a display for you and like the fireworks. But there was always that thing. How do you know he's using the ashes or whoever they are using the ashes? You go, yeah, I'll have them. He's fucked them off in the bin and he's just set up a load of fireworks that he's got from the corner shop. Really. <laughs> so so that that is a question we get asked a lot, Joe, honestly. How from, do you know yeah, that that's yeah, actually... correct. The... So that question gets asked a lot. People ask me that. Or oh, we heard that basically they cremate everybody at the end of the day and all this kind of stuff. If you went to a crematorium, I mean, you're obviously not, but if you went to a, your local crematorium and asked to look around... It's very, very open. They would, they would allow you to go and have a look at how the whole process works. It's really interesting. All the coffins are assigned like a number. That number stays with them from when the service finishes till when you handed the cremated remains back. Would the ashes you get, that also includes the ashes of the coffin, does it? Yeah. So every, the only things which is taken out of the ashes are the metals. So the metal screws, if you had a ring on, for example, if you had a metal ankle... They after they cremate the coffin, they have this magnet type thing which goes over and it takes takes all that stuff out. And then the cremated remains are then put in what they call a cremulator, which is like a tumble dryer, which has got four massive ball bearings in, probably size of grapefruits, and then that fine makes the ashes of fine dust which you get given back to you. Do you know what temperature we'd need to be at for us to Uh, I would, but I I think it's about four hundred degrees. And it, average person probably takes about an hour and a half to be cremated. An hour and a half? Yeah. That seems a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite a long process. You know, you see the curtains. Have you been yeah. to a, cre- a yeah. cremation? The curtains and the slowly closing and the, the coffin oh. going slow. They no. don't light it there and then, you knob. What about that James Bond film where he's in the coffin? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? what no. What? When have you ever been to a, a cremation and you've, you've seen the... <laughs> The Where ash- does that go? Yeah, so the curtain's shut, as Joe said, and then the coffin is taken behind the chapel. That's ah. where they keep the cremators, and then the coffin's then put into the cremator. What are the strangest requests you've had in terms of... So we've had 
A lady once recorded her own eulogy before she died, and then she played it during the service. What? I like that. I like that. What? I, what? But she didn't tell anybody she was going to do it, so they just pressed <laughs> play during the service. I'm going to ask this question on behalf of Steve. Fuck it, did hell. she have a quality mic? <laughs> It was a good recording of it, actually. We've had people... We had people... Hang on a minute. She didn't tell anyone? No. But obviously, she told her husband, but none of the congregation knew about it. Right. Just for a second, Tom, you pitch yourself in this church or wherever it is, the crematorium, and I've gone... Do it now. So we're at the... the, um, Very sad day Joe's passed away. Do my music. Funeral music. Free from desire. Sake. My this has really got out of hand. Okay. Just do some sad music. Um, and I'm going to basically be the uh, celebrant. Um, and before we go any further, we'd like to play you um, the following short message. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it is me, Joe. I know some of you might think that Nelson Mandela is in attendance at Joe's funeral today. But I am not. I am dead. Mm. I am actually Joe. But I am also dead. But I will have you all know I am here with Nelson (laughs) enjoying our time together and perfecting my impersonation. Um, Or I'd be like, Tom... Tom and because no one knows and it's just they, but you know it's my voice everyone's looking around like Shit, bro, yeah. where the fuck he's faked it all he's actually at the back of the thing that would scare the fucking life out of me if I was there and that woman mm. just started speaking I'd be like mm. oh I'm not sure about this one mm. but did they find it funny do you think no. they were very happy with it some things which you might find strange people yeah. you know that's the thing isn't it and it's, as, as I said at the very beginning, it's a celebration of that person's life. You know, in Live and Let Die, they have that band, you know, you play yeah. in front of the... Co- they, we've had that on a funeral before. Like a New uh, Orleans marching yeah, band. Yeah, I what? was a bit like, this is a bit mental. But they, yeah, they had, they had like, uh, a New Orleans marching band. But, Fucking but hell! the worst thing for a funeral director is a bagpiper, right? Because... It sounds terrible. Yeah, but also, you've got to walk... So what we do as a funeral director is we walk in front of the hearse. That's mm-hmm. called paging. Mm-hmm. So you page in front of the hearse, when you get to the crematorium of the church, you walk in front. But the family have paid for this bagpiper, so they want him to walk with you. So then you've got to spend 20 minutes listening to some bloke play some out of tune bagpipe in your left ear. <laughs> and you're just going, oh my God. And then you obviously can't say anything, but then he's playing like Flower of Scotland on repeat. Because they only know two songs, <laughs> which is like... There's only two songs yeah, that really work yeah. with, with bagpipes. And then, um, yeah, and then, then he was like, oh, do you like bagpipe music? And you're like, not yeah, any, yeah, love it. Yeah, not yeah, any fucking baby. more. <laughs> that, hang on, that's the opening conversational gambit from a bagpipe player. <laughs> Do you like, uh, you like bagpipes? <laughs> Do you like bagpipes? Yeah, got all the, got all the panpipe music so, listening all the time. Sorry. Walking with, in front of his, his paging. Yeah. And you, it's obviously quite slow and controlled. Yeah. Cyclists. Yeah, I know. you ask, cyclists. <laughs> cyclists are the worst at that because right. I've nearly been hit two or three times by cyclists. Never cars, always cyclists. Oh. And then you go in what are you doing, mate? And they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't realise. Like, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm just walking in front of a car because that's just what I'm doing, doing, like, Jeff Cates putting the car on my shoulders. Like, you know, <laughs> it's that, like, I look on their face, like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, there's a coffin there and there's a black car. What do you think? Put that down. Hold on. Uh, so Fred's going to do my funeral, just that's so you good. know. Yeah. Uh, but I want Fred to pull my, <laughs> instead of horse and car, horse and carriage, it's uh, Fred and carriage, okay? Yeah. Specifically... And he has to dress like Jeff Capes. <laughs> With okay. the black cap. <laughs> okay. What, in the, because this happens to all of us, Fred. You might be walking, you might be driving or on a bike, and you see a hearse coming towards you, and you can see from the cars behind you that it is on the way to the funeral. How should we act? Should we stop? Should we bow our heads? If you're in a car and you're driving towards us, just drive past very slowly. If you're coming towards us. If you're on the side of the road, take a hat off maybe, bow your head. That's fine. If you're behind us, don't ever take the hearse and limousine. The other thing which happens, so you've got the hearse, you've got the limousine, and you come out of a junction, and some belter will be like, I'm not waiting, I'm going, and they're in between the hearse yeah. and the limousine. Oh, I've just been tra- in between us. <laughs> yeah, There's a scene yeah, of the in between yeah. us. They're like in a rush, and he's trying to pull out. And he's like, no, fuck it, go. And Jay is making go, go, go now, it's clear. And it's only clear because they're going so fucking slow. They get, and they're in this yellow fucking Fiat Punto, and he's like, Oh fuck! Yeah. And the people behind, like, fucking get out of way, get yes, out! That it's that that that, that does happen more than you think. Honestly, it does. Like it does, and people just need to be more aware. Has anyone, like, when a hearse 
as at the end of its useful life for a funeral director. Do they get purchased by gothic yep. people? Yeah, you can buy them. You can buy them. To be honest, looking at them, it's actually got loads of space. This well, could actually... family holiday it would be actually be quite because the boot space is. Fantastic. I'm looking at I'm looking at a Ford Norwood, yeah. and it's a TDCI modern hearse. There's fucking loads of boot room, obviously, but this one's got seats in the front and the middle, like the, so that's would fit all the kids and then we could just put the dogs in the back and then people would always let us out as well wouldn't they <laughs> wore a black suit you could just walk in front and there's, then there's get... one way of beating the traffic then I'll fucking yeah. go for that then what other strange quests have you had people turn up in fancy dress sometimes the, the deceased no no oh, the, right. the, the, okay, the mourners yeah. the mourners people have strange coffins like you can what's get coffins. what sort of, I thought all coffins were like just bog standard no 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 no, no. You have, there's loads of different coffins you can have like what so you can have a cardboard coffin a wicker coffin. Fucking hell, can you imagine trying to carry me in a cardboard coffin? And you can have coffins, so you have like the standard... <laughs> I'm wood- fucking foolish. How's someone getting a cardboard coffin? Well... Do they not... Sh- you c- surely you can't carry them in that. Yeah. But they're full straight it's through it, it's mate. It's got a solid bottom. So, so you can. Have- but what people also can have is like, you can have... It's like a parcel which says this way up. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So you can literally have anything you want. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can have whatever you want. White coffins, sparkly coffins, you can have anything. On average, how much is a funeral going to cost someone? So, if you use an independent funeral director, which is a family-run funeral director, yeah. which we, we are, should, is that yeah, that's it? saying you should. You're encouraged because yeah. you've obviously yeah. told us as why you're so good at yeah, it. That, anyway, yeah, they're about for a funeral for a cremation, her standard veneered oak coffin, bearers, flowers, orders of service, about four and a half thousand pounds. Are you? Charging a little bit extra because I'm asking you to pull it yourself. No, no, I wouldn't charge any extra. Oh, you do it for free. But as long as can you get that written down? <laughs> get this being a contract. Yeah, that, so that, four, you're looking at for about four and a half, four and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, if let's say when Joe passes eventually, he has spent most of his money, Fred. I need to knock off a grand from the total. Where your can bar- I make my your savings? Barter- oh, sorry. Yeah. So if you don't have limousine, a lesser coffin. Etc. That's that's where you can save some money, you know. So the cheapest option is the cardboard coffin. I'm guessing. I wouldn't say that. I would. Oh. I wouldn't suggest anyone having a cardboard coffin. We stock them because people want them. But I would. I always advise my family not to have them because, as you said, Joe, they're not very sturdy. Not the bottoms, but the sides. Oh. So that's why, and they also creak a bit, God. which I don't think is appropriate. Right. So I'm not going to make the savings on the. In fact, Fred, I'm going to give Joe a treat. I'm going to give Joe a proper send off. If I double that. If I'm willing to go up to eight to see Joe off in style, mm. where would I be best off spending my money? Cars for Joe's family. That was for one limousine, so you could have four or five limousines. I ain't got fucking hell. How big's my family? Are they having a car? They're having a car each. Children, partners, cousins, Quinn support staff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and, um, and flowers. More flowers. Yeah, I like a flower actually. Mm. Surely you need to know a little bit about flowers, don't well, you? I don't know too much about it. But people like the letters. So that's what people, a lot of people have, like mum or grandma. So I was up at the crematorium a couple of weeks ago and someone had dickhead. In <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how much did it cost me to get a dickhead? Well, what do you mean someone had dickhead in flowers? <laughs> yeah, letters, yeah, dickhead. <laughs> but yeah, that's what, that's what they wanted, that's what they got, so to speak. <laughs> how much did the doves cost me? Oh, the dove man, he's, he's on a good one, the dove man, because he charges... 250 for the first dove and then 50 pound for the second dove okay so and then you straight 30, away. 30 pounds for every dove after so if you want three doves it's costing you like 300 notes this first dove better be fucking <laughs> massive the nuts do you know what i mean this dove, like massive chest like the nicest feathers going what's his coo like oh <laughs> 250 quid for a fucking bird to show off its wings does the dove man, right, does he lose all those doves or has he trained them? Are they homing doves? Homing doves. What? They flow back to him. Why are we not in the dove man business, Joe? Well, I think we will be after this. This has been brilliant. It's been brilliant because my concerns about coming into it and thinking it's going to be quite heavy and thinking, mm. the way you've come across, the way you've spoken about those bits and bobs mm. has been brilliant. Thanks. You've spoken so openly and honestly about it that... Like you said, you you said first off, me and Tom are die. We're going to die. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah, sorry. That sorry is that, that is a matter of fact. Yeah. At some point, we're all going to die. So why the fuck would we avoid mm. talking about these things? Mm. In the same way, we've spoken about mental health in the past. Why mm. do, the, the issue comes when you're not communicating with these things. Correct. And the more you openly talk about the darker things in life, the more comfortable you are about it. It's not disrespectful. I'm sure there'll be times uh, there'll be people that listen to this and. 
and they'll complain that at times we might might have come across a disrespectful talking about the deaf, but the the intention and the no. context isn't disrespectful. And, that, and that's like I said, Joe. Like all like with funerals and stuff, they are hard. We understand that. All we want to do is respect people mm. and also respect the person who's passed away mm. because we just want their wishes. Because it's a hard time. We understand that. It's mm. really hard. Fred, it's been brilliant having you on. Thank you so much for coming on, mate. I've had a great laugh, but also really enjoyed your company. No worries. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, mate. Joe, I'll be honest with you. I thought he was a lovely guest, but also, and possibly more importantly, a very lovely human being. Yeah, I really enjoyed him. I loved the way that he spoke passionately about how important it is. Like, it's not just a job. Obviously, it's a family business he's done, but he's... He properly buys into it. He said, whatever they want for whatever service they're trying to have, and we will accommodate everything. Oh, he's just really nice. I like the way he spoke about it. And obviously trying to change the sort of stigma or stereotype of stiff funeral directors. I shouldn't have used stiff. That was such a bad (laughs) word. No, but you did so well because you used the word stigma and stereotype, and I felt this great glow of pride, and then you fucked it up. (laughs) yet again well if you enjoyed that as much as joe and i did and you would like to support the show you can now subscribe on apple spotify and patreon search for guess what joe marler show for a single pound a week you can get bonus content ad free episodes and you'll be growing the show at the same time yeah and if you want to get some merchandise also known as merch ridiculous that i have to call it that you can go to joemarler.co.uk forward slash shop and you can order your bits and bobs today. Superb, Joe. If you would like another podcast to listen to before Joe and I are back together in a week's time, let us recommend .com. This is the documentary series about the people of the internet. They did show a sensational series about Wikipedia. There is another one out now all about Reddit. So if you think the internet is this weird, anonymous, faceless place, think again, my friends. Search for .com and get to know the people behind the screens. Right, who's on next week's show, please? Joe, it is a fashion designer. Well, what the fuck are they going to say about me and you? Well, you. Pardon? And that's the sort of bitchy chat that I expect. See you then. Crowd Network. A place where you belong.